Do you struggle with any of the following? Maybe some indigestion, little red bumps on the backs of the arms, maybe some bloating, especially after half an hour after eating. Maybe you're having troubles digesting food since getting your gallbladder removed, or maybe you're suffering with some embarrassing gas. Well, if you understand and can relate to anything that I'm saying, then you are gonna love this episode because I've got some tools for you. Are you ready? If so, let's go. Hey everybody, I'm Melissa Ramos, nutritionist with a background in Chinese medicine, and I'm also the boss mama of sexy food therapy, helping people feel sexy from the inside out by balancing their hormones and their digestion. And speaking of digestion, we got an incredible episode tonight, episode seven, Sechi Siete. I'm really stoked. And the reason why is because, frankly, I love talking about poop. <laughs> and I have to tell you first and foremost that I myself have struggled with digestive issues for a very long time. And I'm just looking at uh, some of the comments that are coming up. I know a lot of people are really excited about this. Hello, Karen White saying she's looking forward to the show. Any of you guys here at all ever struggle with digestive issues? Any of the stuff that I mentioned, so bloating, embarrassing gas, the red bumps on the backs of the arms, which you might be like, how on earth does that have, to, what, what does that have to do with digestion? A lot, actually. Um, anybody with their gallbladder removed, if that's any of you guys, drop it like it's hot below and let me know. Um, Lynn says, hi there, and share, thank you. Thank you so much. For those of you guys who are sharing, like the lovely Lynn McNaughton, I would really appreciate if you could follow her suit and share this puppy because a lot of people are struggling with digestive issues. And frankly, when you do, it doesn't make you too happy. Okay, so hey girl, hey Leslie, Laura, Karen says yes, Lynn says yes, gas, stomach issues, no gallbladder says Lynn, and Jennifer Edenfield says all the time. So clearly, we're not alone. So the first thing I wanna break down to you guys is let's talk about acid reflux. Because it's a big one, and a lot of people are just popping things like antacids, proton pump inhibitors, and just, they're living off of them. And what I want to be able to share with you is, is that, believe it or not, these types of medications, they actually lower our stomach acid. And now you might be like, but that's the whole point. Here's the thing. Quite often, the reason why people are getting acid reflux is because they actually don't have enough stomach acid. So what ends up happening is our body then intuitively overproduces, creating that wash up of stomach acid, which frankly doesn't feel so good. And it's really important to understand, well, why is this happening? And one of the biggest reasons that I quite often see is stress. Because when we're stressed, our body is going, Heck, I gotta get away from that bear that's chasing me because I'm just so stressed out. I'm not gonna go digest that food right now. Mm -mm. So that's the reason. And so our digestive capability literally just goes and just shuts right down because it wants to take care of the stress. As we get older, our digestive fire, our stomach acid, uh, begins to decrease as well. So that's a really huge thing to be able to understand. And from a hormonal perspective, which is really interesting, is that our thyroid hormones, believe it or not, they cannot be absorbed whatsoever without the presence of stomach acid. So if you suffer from any thyroid conditions, even like Hashimoto's, for example, or hypothyroidism, you want to make sure that this episode is something that you listen to 1000%. Like, listen up, because you need to have stomach acid uh, to be able to assimilate a lot of nutrients that are required for the proper health of your body. So those are really big ones. Now I do want to be able to let you guys know just first and foremost that above in the description of this post, um, I actually put a link where you can actually be entered to win a $500, $500 digestive healing prize pack from my friends at St. Francis Herb Farm. And it's a kick butt 
kick butt prize pack. So what I want you to do is if you can, whether it's now or whether it's afterwards, make sure you click on that link. It'll ask you for your name and your email address. You don't have to pay a dime. We're not going to go give out your email address to anybody. It's just so that you are eligible to win and we will send you details on what you have to do to be, uh, to win that prize pack. Um, and it's not there in your soul, <laughs> anything like that. In fact, we're going to talk a little bit more about that contest in just a bit. So, uh, super excited. So, um, I just want to be able to uh, kind of go through some of these questions. Um, oh, thank you for sharing. My goodness, Jennifer, really appreciate that. For all of you guys who are sharing, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Karen White, thank you. Um, so we talked a little bit about acid reflux. Now, what can you do when you've got acid reflux? So don't got enough stomach acid. Now you need to be able to put in some stomach acid. One of the ways to do it, truthfully, there's a couple of ways. My favorite way is actually through a bitters tincture. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this at all because sometimes the light just blocks this out, but this is literally, this uh, is Canadian bitters combo and it's from my friends at St. Francis Herb Farm. This killer formula and killer, I mean killer by good, is a phenomenal old age far formula, old age as in it's just been around forever. Not for old people, it's been around forever. Everyone can use it, okay? Everyone meaning so long as you're not breastfeeding and so long as you're not pregnant. But phenomenal because one of the things I love about this formula is it also has ginger. Now, it helps to actually warm up the system. And in Chinese medicine, the wonderful thing about a bitters tincture that has ginger, because a lot of them have peppermint in them, which is also great for gas and so forth. But I find ginger is a very warming spice. And especially women tend to be a little bit on the cooler side. So I love the fact that they've added ginger into their bitters tincture. And this actually helps to stimulate digestive fire. It helps to stimulate digestive fire. It helps to increase bile flow as well. And it has, frankly, a combination of various herbs. You've got globe artichoke in there, which is amazing for things like constipation, abdominal pain, vomiting, flatulence. We talked a little bit about that. You guys heard my little soundbite fart probably up at the top. Dandelion. We hear about dandelion all the time for the liver. So amazing also for the liver because believe it or not, the liver is a part of your digestive system. Um, and there's other herbs in there that we're going to talk about in a bit. Now, listen, I know that I've got some friends who are listening in right now who are American. And frankly, unfortunately, right now you can't get this in the States yet. But if you don't and you're like, what do I do if I'm in the States and I can't get St. Francis Bitters combo or if you're in the UK or if you're in Australia, from my friends from the land down under, very, very poor imitation of Aussies. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, but you know what? Apple cider vinegar also works really well also. And uh, some people are like, ugh, apple cider vinegar, ugh, bitters. You want your body to do that. Okay, you want your body to do that because it helps to stimulate the, those digestive juices. So I always say to people, take like one teaspoon of this stuff, put it in your mouth, and take that about five to ten minutes before you eat. With a bitters combo, you would take about, truthfully, I take about a good two to three full droppers worth. And I always have this in my purse. Always. Either it's the Canadian bitters combo or it's their Hepato DR. They're both bitters. Uh, but I always have it in my purse because it's easy to travel with when you're out at a restaurant. So really, really, really helpful. Um, I just want to scroll down some of the, co the comments. It's called, uh, so Jillian, uh, Aurea, it's called Canadian Bitters Combo from St. Francis. Um, and yes, you can get it here in Canada at your local health food store. They do carry it. They carry it also on well.ca, um, National Nutrition, a bunch of other online um, uh, shops as well. I want to talk about the annoying bumps on the backs of the arms. How many of y'all have uh, annoying bumps on the backs of the arms? If you do, please let me know because this is a really big thing that I had struggled with, had being the operative word, for a very long time. What people don't realize is, is that for the longest, well, let me back, let me back this train up. So for the longest time I was told, Melissa, it's a vitamin A deficiency. It's a vitamin A deficiency. That's what I was told through school. So you want to know what I did? I took vitamin A. And you want to know what happened? The bumps didn't go away. So I'm like, what gives? Here is what's happening. Vitamin A, and this is my theory because there's a lot of theories out there, okay? A lot of theories out there, and I'm going to talk about these. 
So vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin, okay? But maybe the problem isn't the vitamin A necessarily. It's about your inability to absorb that fat soluble vitamin. You'll also see articles online that will say it's because of gluten and you know, oh, you're celiac or you have a gluten intolerance, that that's the reason why. Well, the reality is foods that, that contain gluten are inflammatory. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna impair our digestive system. So we go right back to an impaired digestive system and an impaired liver as well. You can't absorb those critical nutrients like vitamin A. So please do not go out and run out to your health food store and purchase vitamin A because it is not the issue. The issue is, is honestly your digestive system. And truthfully, when I look at that, I'm like, really focusing in on the digestive system, taking out the inflammatory foods, the gluten, the dairy, the soy, um, the alcohol, and the coffee. I know that you guys are like, no, not my coffee. I love coffee too. My family's Brazilian. You might as well like inject it in my veins. But if you're sitting there drinking more than four servings of alcohol per week, drinking loads of coffee, coffee and alcohol are inflammatory to the system. It doesn't mean you can never enjoy them, it's just enjoy them with care and with moderation, okay? So really, really, really important to understand that. Yes, and Stephanie, it is called keratosis pilaris. In other words, keratosis pilaris. <laughs> but for some reason, Stephanie, I love saying it that way. Keratosis pilaris. But that's actually the, the reason for, um, or actually the name of those red bumps behind the arm. So Alicia says she has the bumps. Um, a bunch of you guys, bumpy like a chicken, says Leslie. Um, had them until I stopped gluten. So it's case in point. And if you're like, I still have them, I stopped gluten, give it time because it does take time for them to go away. Um, but it does with some, some, some uh, digestive work. I always, I love L-glutamine. I know some people will say that, you know, it can cause digestive upset. But with any supplement, start small increase slowly. And the max dose that I would give of L-glutamine is 40 grams per day, divided doses. So, you know, you have a bottle of water, you can put about maybe five grams of it to start. And five grams is literally one serving of L-glutamine powder. Um, and I like just put it in my water slowly throughout the day and I slowly work up. Digestive issues with L-glutamine could be like gas and some bloating, some of the stuff that you kind of want to stay away from or not be exposed to, but it's allow the body to get used to it. And what L-glutamine does is it helps to repair um, an inflamed intestinal lining. So really, really, really important. Even adding in some good probiotics is incredibly important because we need that friendly gut bacteria as well. And of course, you know, from a food perspective, we talked about the things that you want to stay away from. Using bone broth is great. Again, rich in L-glutamine and glycine as well. So really, really, really helpful things to include. What is moderation intake per week on coffee and wine? It says Flor Serrano. I love saying your name, by the way. Um, so moderate intake of, of alcohol, uh, as I mentioned, is no more than four servings per week. Um, when it comes to coffee, I know a lot of you guys are gonna go, oh, no way. I generally reserve it for the weekends. Um, some people can actually do one a day and feel completely fine. But if you are suffering from bloating and any of these digestive issues, if you're struggling with hormonal issues and adrenal fatigue, you wanna give your body a bit of a break from coffee and a bit of a break from alcohol. Uh, and then when you bring it back in, just leave it on the weekends for a bit. In fact, if you're clenching or grinding your teeth, that is a key sign that your body is lacking of that magnesium because the coffee acts on the nervous system, which makes you do this. And then you're grinding and clenching your jaw. And then you're like, why does it hurt so much? Oh yeah, it's because coffee, even decaf, is a stimulant on the nervous system. So really, really, really important to understand that. And what, speaking of coffee and alcohol, they actually um, rob the body of various nutrients, um, which is important to understand. And one of the key ones is zinc. Um, so that's a really, really huge thing to, to really pay attention to. Now, from a, um, you know, a, a gas and bloating type perspective, 
I know a bunch of people suffer with gas and bloating, a whole whack of them. So I thought I would just do this little skill testing question. And I'm going to find out your answers when we get back from this little break. So let me know the answer. You're going to type it down as we go through this, okay? Three, two, one. If you've ever struggled with bloating, then I've got a skill testing question for you. Which of the following does not cause bloating? Is it raw foods, papaya seeds, ice cold water, artificial sweeteners, or low zinc levels? Okay, so what do you guys think the answer is? Which one of those do not create any form of bloating? Okay, so a bunch of them do, except for one. So I'm really curious to know which one. So which one? So we've got Jennifer says low zinc. She doesn't think uh, is the issue. Papaya says Leslie. Papaya sees. Ice cold water says Kareen. Low zinc. So we've got some... some Cindy says papaya seeds. So we've got definitely some answers all across the board. I freaking love this. So the answer to this question, oh my God, still got it coming in. Water, okay, papaya seeds. Okay, so for those of you guys who said papaya seeds, you were correct. So papaya seeds actually does not cause bloating. Really interesting tip, when you eat papaya, papaya has something called papain, and it's actually... A digestive, um, uh, it actually helps to stimulate digestion, or actually it's an enzyme um, that aids with digestion, I should say. Getting all tongue tied here. What you want to do is when you eat the papaya, those seeds, you're going to scrape them out. You're going to put them on a tray, okay, a, a parchment lined tray. And then what you're going to do is you're going to uh, bake them on low. Not bake them, but like dehydrate them. So on the lowest setting of your oven or even in your food dehydrator is even better. And you want to dry those little babies out. Dry them out. And then when you're done, you're going to mix them in your pepper mill. This is a very freaking cool tip, I got to say. And the reason why is because of the fact that the what actually is most rich in papain are the seeds. And the seeds have this very mild, peppery flavor to them. So the next time that you're actually consuming or eating a, a consuming, I sound so like conservative. <laughs> I don't know. When next time you're eating papaya, take the seeds, dry those suckers out, and put them in your pepper mill because they are wonderful, they don't taste nasty, they just have a very mild peppery flavor and you can mix them in with your regular peppers. Um, and, ah, oh, Maria Gonzalez, thank you so much for bringing this up. They are also an anti-parasite, which is amazing. And truthfully, if you do have parasites, it can cause bloating as well. So thank you for bringing that up, much appreciated. Um, and thank you Marlene and Tana. How long do you bake them at the lowest setting? Just until they dry out, Samantha, that's it. So really, really, really great tip. I do want to mention that those people who actually have a compromised digestive system generally also have low levels of vitamin D. I mean, vitamin B12 as well, but make sure when you go to your medical doctor and you're going in for testing, don't just test your B12, but also test your vitamin D status. You will have to pay an additional fee for it, but really, really, really important that you get that tested um, because of the fact that, you know, your you might intake it from the sun, from like it beating down on your skin, which we're not really getting very much of in Toronto these days. But um, the other thing is that our livers can't actually manufacture that vitamin D uh, efficiently. Um, so really, really, really important. Uh, my next topic that I want to cover is fatty livers. I've said this before, but I got to say it again. 90 million Americans, guys, have a fatty liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver. So where the heck is it coming from? It's coming from consuming too much sugar, excess carbohydrates. Why? Because it's everywhere and it's easy to consume. So we're just shoving our faces with breads and pastas and wraps and we're thinking, ooh, wraps don't have that much carbs. They have tons of carbs. And I'm not saying carbs are the devil. Vegetables have carbs, believe it or not. But what is the right type of carb? Okay. And believe it, listen, there's some mornings, especially in the wintertime where I wake up and I'm like, I really want to have like 
a bowl of steel cut oats. So I'll allow myself to do that. So I'm not anti-grain by any stretch. I don't have a label on myself with, with the way that my food choices are, but I do suggest to try to keep your carbohydrates, your complex carbohydrates to a low. Because um, when you're consuming too much, you get rock hard liver. So truthfully, it's the reason why that I still go back to my bitters. And I go back to these because of the fact that you need this for liver support. Ladies, if you've got hormonal issues, PCOS, endo, fibroids, any of those issues, you need to make sure you're taking your bitters. Believe it or not, in my water right now, I actually put some of my bitters in here. Like I, I'm a little bit of a junkie with bitters. It is probably my favorite herbal combination. Um, and my friends at St. Francis know this about me. But um, I don't just take it before I eat. Sometimes I'll even splish it in, in my water as well. Uh, because of the fact that I am getting some of that extra liver love, um, you know, and you have to look at your parents sometimes too and go, you know, what, what were the ailments that my parents struggled with? My father had jaundice when he was nine years old. My mother went through a hysterectomy. So clearly liver work is going to be needed and it's going to be more of a sensitive thing on me um, that I have to make sure that I'm proactive about. So I encourage you to look at your family members. What did they struggle with? And what are the things now that you can become proactive about? Super important. Super important. Um, Sheila asks, what's the best vit brand of vitamins to get zinc and magnesium? So here is the thing. I don't necessarily think that there are the brands that you need to concern yourself with, uh, Sheila. What you have to concern yourself with is the form, okay? So the form that you're looking for with magnesium uh, magnesium bisglycinate, so bisglycinate is actually the most bioavailable form of magnesium that there is. So just look for magnesium bisglycinate. If you struggle with constipation, there is research to show that magnesium citrate actually works better for those who are constipated than magnesium bisglycinate. So that's actually really interesting. Um, when you look at things that have uh, vitamins, that the, the forms of citrate, for example. So citrate actually works with our citric acid cycle, which is our um, metabolic cycle, the Krebs cycle. So zinc citrate also would be very helpful as well. Uh, quite often when I get a zinc, I'll get it from um, a whole food supplement, but I have to caution you guys on zinc because you might be like, wait, she told me low levels of zinc could potentially be the reason why that I don't have enough stomach acid, and it's true. Low levels of zinc, zinc helps to produce stomach acid. But before you go running out to the store, listen up. Don't go away. Don't go watching some other YouTube video right now. you got to listen to this. Go on Amazon and purchase something called a zinc tally test. Now, what a zinc tally test is, is it's this little bottle, maybe about, probably a little bit bigger than this, this um, tincture bottle, but it's a little bottle, um, and you would put about a tablespoon of this clear liquid into, onto a tablespoon, you're gonna put it in your mouth, and you're gonna swish it, you can do a little dance if you want, <laughs> for about 30 seconds or so, and then you're gonna swallow it. If it tastes like water, you're deficient. It should taste metallic-y, metallic -y. it's zinc, right? It's a mineral. Um, so it should have that taste, that aftertaste of metallic. Um, if it tastes like water, which it did for me, and signs of, of low zinc levels is also slow wound healing. Uh, anxiety could be a part of that picture. Uh, hair that might be falling out, uh, skin ailments as well. Um, and yes, low stomach acid levels. So. If you are low and you're seeing that it tastes like water, you can supplement with zinc. Like 50 milligrams of zinc, you can supplement it for a bit, but test yourself every single week. And the reason why that I mentioned the importance of that is because if you take zinc for a prolonged period of time, zinc and copper work on this little seesaw. So if you take too much zinc, you can offset your copper balance. So too much zinc might actually mean that you can go into a deficiency of copper, which can be equally as dangerous. It's the reason why if you go into a health food store, you will end up seeing a zinc-copper balance in a lot of different formulas. And those are great if you're taking zinc for a long period of time. Otherwise, make sure that you test it at home. Those zinc tally tests on Amazon 
are like 30 bucks. They're cheap. So pick yourself up a bottle. And if you're even trying to conceive, ladies, um, make sure that your husband, he tests that as well because zinc is important so that his soldiers, his sperm, are running efficiently. Motility, mobility. The soldiers got to be strong and they need the zinc. All right? So really, really important. Um, okay. Was recommended magnesium gel for restless legs? Yes, magnesium gel would be great for restless legs as well. Uh, Ray says she was diagnosed with a fatty liver. This is so informative. Thank you for these videos. For sure. I love doing these. Um, and I really feel that um, it's, it's so crucial that Ray, and if any of you guys have been diagnosed with a fatty liver, the absolute number one thing that you have to include is a bitters tincture. And if you're in Canada, the Canadian bitters combo is absolutely fantastic. And right now, guys, I want to let you guys know, um, if you're in Canada and you're like, I got to go pick myself up a bottle of, uh, you know, Canadian bitters combo, you can actually get 10% off right now if you go on well.ca, which is a very popular uh, online shop, go to well.ca, you can get 10% off this bad boy right now when you when you shop for it. And make sure if you just tuned in, the link in the description of this uh, Facebook live stream, I have included a little link where you can actually enter yourself to win a $500 digestive healing prize pack from St. Francis. It's This contest is going on all month. You're gonna end up getting an email afterwards that's going to describe the contest details do you want to know what they are? Are you guys ready to find out what you have to do to win 500 bo like bucks? Anybody here? Because um, I'm sure you probably do. <laughs> I've already got people saying yes. So what you have to do, you're going to enter in your details on that link. You're going to get an email back. And we want you to show us your bitter's face. So quite frankly, anytime you take the stuff, ooh, show us your bitter's face on Facebook, on Instagram, but you have to hashtag bitters face. If you don't hashtag bitters face, we got no way of finding your entry. So make sure you hashtag that. Um, so enter your stuff to win that. Um, you'll get an email and all you literally have to do is show us your bitters face with St. Francis Canadian uh, bitters combo and hashtag bitters face. Really, really, really important. For those of you guys who have troubles digesting because you don't got a gallbladder, I see this quite often, all the time. I still recommend a bitters tincture, absolutely. You want to make sure that your fat content isn't super high because you still might struggle. Now, a lot of people might be like, well, I don't, have a, I don't have a gallbladder, so does it make a difference about bile flow? Well, bile is produced in the liver. It just was used to be stored in the gallbladder. So what happens is when you don't have a gallbladder, the liver produces this um, bile and then it just kind of dumps into the small intestine and not very much of it pumps out into there. So you're not getting enough to be able to digest that fat. So it's the reason why that you take a bitters tincture or if you're, like I said, if you're in the States, you can take some apple cider vinegar um, and that will actually help to produce more bile flow and um, it will at least be able to aid in a lot of the fat digestion. And remember those fat soluble vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin A. We were talking about that issue with the, the bumps on the backs of the arms. Quite often I see, you know, people who've got no gallbladder and, you know, they're like, I'm taking the bitters and I'm still having some problems. And that, that could be true for you. And if that is true for you, then I would suggest getting an enzyme formula that contains something called HCL. And what that stands for is hydrochloric acid. And that's essentially mimicking your stomach acid so that you can break down food. Because people who don't have a gallbladder still require um, that, that digestive help early in the beginning, which really begins in your stomach. And those are generally the two places that I would start uh, if you've got, if you don't have a gallbladder at all. Just be careful um, with the foods that you're eating. And if you are doing a more high fat, low carb, you just want to make sure that maybe in one sitting you're not like gobbling up a ton of fat. So if you do a fat bomb, maybe you have half of it versus a full one. So just be able to moderate the kinds of foods that you're consuming. Um, hi, sweetie, says Tina. Hey, girl. Uh, Louisa says, uh, this is the issue I'm having now after two years of a gallbladder removal. So if you are having a gall, if you are having those digestive issues and you're like having loose poops or you're having constipation or you're having lots of gas and bloating, those are things to be able to watch out for. 
Um, I will say that some of the, uh, obviously lemon is phenomenal uh, if you've got digestive issues. Believe it or not, rosemary. Rosemary is amazing also uh, for digestive issues. And I mentioned something in that sort of questionnaire that we were talking about, uh, that I, at least that I, I showed to you guys, where I was like, which one does not create bloating and gas? One of the things that was listed in there that a lot of you guys thought was the answer was ice water. When you go to a, 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 um, a restaurant and they bring you ice water to start, always say no ice. And the reason why is because ice cold um, water actually extinguishes that digestive fire, that hydrochloric acid. So when you put food in, in, in your mouth and it's trying to digest it, it can't. So make sure that you don't drink ice cold water. And I know a lot of people love it. Stay away from it as much as possible. And the other thing uh, that I mentioned in that little uh, brief bitty was raw foods. Uh, a lot of people might be like, raw foods is great. There's so many enzymes in it, da 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 But the reality is, is that they're still very hard. You have to like chew them, break them down uh, so that you can actually digest them. So I would strongly suggest that if you are having digestive difficulties, make sure that you end up cooking your foods uh, so that you can actually help uh, your body a little bit so it doesn't have to go through all that roughage to try to, to struggle at breaking it down. Uh, suggestions for GERD after pretty much every food ever since I had a baby and worse around my period. Could it be my hormones? It definitely could be your hormones for sure. And without seeing you in consults, I don't really know what they are, but one of the things that I do provide in practice is a hormone panel. And I provide it because I'm able to understand where your hormones are at that could be affecting it. Um, so because there's a lot of fluctuations before your period, believe it or not, progesterone and estrogen do have a strong tie to digestion in terms of regulating digestion. So that could be absolutely an issue. Your age will have a factor in that as well. So there's a lot of factors to consider before me giving you a definite answer. Um, Lynn says, if the water is still cold, warming it in your mouth before swallowing helps? Good question, but I would say you'd have to literally like just sit there like, and make that really sexy face, Lynn, like this. <laughs> so no, I would just say, make sure it's room temperature water. Um, so those are definitely uh, the big ones that I wanna be able to point out that I wanted to cover today. I wanna tell you a little bit more about some of the herbs that are in uh, a really great uh, bitters tincture, like the Canadian bitters, which I mentioned to you guys, please go on well.ca to grab a bottle. It's only 10% off, which, it, well, it is 10% off, which is amazing. Um, there's also globe artichoke in the formula. And globe artichoke, like I said before, it's great for constipation. Um, I love the fact that they have chamomile in their formula because it's a very pleasant herb. You guys have probably drank chamomile in your life. Um, and it's an anti-inflammatory, so incredibly healing for the digestive system as well. Um, I love that they include burdock in it because burdock actually helps to cleanse the blood. If you're someone who has suffered from constipation, you get a bunch of, of capillaries that are just like <sniffs> attached to your, your large intestine. And when you are not pooping, guess what's happening? It's going <sniffs> like literally those little red, those little capillaries that are attached to your large intestine, they're doing this. <sighs> you are literally drinking poop water your blood is becoming toxic. And that's the reason why people feel crappy and they feel tired and they feel sluggish. You don't want that to happen. Um, so I love that this formula actually helps to aid with digestive function, not just for gas and bloating and for you know liver uh, health, but also for constipation, um, also to purify the blood. And it does also contain black walnut. So if you are suffering from any uh, candida type issues, any candida protocol I've ever put anybody on, Truthfully, any protocol I put people on, I always put bitters in. There's just so many benefits to it. And the reality is, is that because this actually contains black walnut in it, uh, it also acts as an antifungal. So candida sufferers, listen up. Antifungal, antiparasitic, um, really, really, really amazing. And it has turmeric. And we all know that turmeric, I mean, what doesn't it do? It does everything. <laughs> it's an anti-inflammatory. And according to Chinese medicine, it really helps to strengthen the spleen, which in Chinese medicine governs digestion and the liver. So a really kick butt powerful uh, formula. Oh my God, that's me, says Shannon. 
Uh, what if I'm allergic to chamomile? Um, are you, so if you're allergic to chamomile, I would check out, you can either do their apple, you can either do apple cider vinegar. That would also would be a great alternative. I would check out the hepato DR. I'd have to look at it to, to double check if it has chamomile in that formula. Hi, Lauren. Um, been doing a lot of this already and learned it all from you, says Maria. You're welcome, sweetheart. <laughs> I love my tribe. Okay, so Parvina says, I did my blood work for thyroids and all the hormones and everything. All my blood work came back normal according to the standard lab, but according to my naturopath doctor, uh, I, I my thyroids and hormones, so there she prescribed me hormonal replacement, estrogen and, and testosterone, and sun thyroid medication very low. My regular doctor said it should not be a hormonal replacement this early in life. I'm 38 and have history of long periods and spotting. She is concerned about side effects in the long run. What should I do? So first and foremost, I would speak to your naturopath because um, I am definitely in the vein of I don't ever want to step on any practitioner's toes. I want to work with them. Um, and I actually do agree with your naturopathic doctor because the reality is is that there are lab ranges and then there are functional ranges for thyroid, uh, for thyroid panels. And um, that's probably what your naturopath was looking at. Um, the reality is I'm 38, um, even though I know maybe I look like I can get carded tomorrow at the, the liquor store. <laughs> Just kidding, kind of. But, um, I, you know, I, I, it's interesting because I'm on bioidentical progesterone therapy and it has improved dramatically uh, my health uh, in terms of my periods and so forth to actually aid in the rest of the stuff that I was doing. So I don't believe that uh, at 38 you're too young. Um, I think that you're actually probably being proactive. Um, okay, so guys, I am so thrilled for this contest, like I mentioned, if you have not gone to the link that I have posted uh, about how to actually win that $500 gift pack, please do so. The contest is running all month long. So you got all month to enter into the contest, to show us your bidder's face, make sure you hashtag bidder's face, real important. You got all month to do it, really important. And now you can go on well.ca and get 10% off this bottle, Canadian Bitters. Can you see that? Oh, there we go. Canadian Bitters, uh, Digestive Bitters combo from my friends at St. Francis Herb Farm. Freaking love this stuff. Awesome stuff. And it is an absolute must have if you are on any protocol whatsoever. So, guys, I don't know about you. But I am so thrilled to have had this opportunity to be able to speak with you today, to be able to chat with you guys today. Thank you so much for sharing it if you have. And I'll see you guys next week. Have a good night.